we reached out to Jerry Rig Everything to see what he would put into his dream smartphone. In this video, we're going to cover all the specs, how much it would cost, and we even got Tech Tourist Studios to mock it up for us so we can show Zach at the end. Let's get into it. We hopped on a call with Zach to discuss his dream smartphone, and after we covered all the components, we asked him to guess what he thought the final bond price would be. And he said, If I had to guess, I would say like we're at like a thousand bucks, maybe. For context, Marquez's dream phone was 500 USD, but he had some pretty top tier balls to the wall specs inside. So what's Zach added to add so much cost to his phone? Well, good question me, because that's what this whole video is about. So let's get on with it. Also, like last time, we're going to start out with the cheap stuff and get more expensive throughout the video. And also, the team hasn't shared the cost with me. So we're going to find out together whether Zach got close to that final bond price at the end of the video. To start us off, Zach's phone is very different to Marquez. He wasn't interested in specific components like processors and RAM. Zach was more interested in upgrading the physical components, building a reliable phone. So to kick off the costing, we're going to start with the same core components as last time, which starts us off at 450 USD. But didn't Marquez only spend 50 on design materials? So I'm just a bit confused about what exactly Zach's added to add another 500. I get the impression this is going to be very expensive. A bit of a hot topic here, we're going to be talking about the headphone jack, but also the SD card reader. On literally every video we put out, there's comments about why we should add back the headphone jack. And we're going to quickly cover why the industry has moved away from this trend. In an average smartphone, there are two main circuit boards. The big one at the top, which is called the motherboard, which handles the chipset, the RAM, the cameras, the antennas and other things. And you also have the daughter board, which is located at the bottom of the phone, much smaller, but looks after things like the optical fingerprint sensor, the speaker, the SIM tray and more antennas. So there's a 3.5mm jack would normally need to go at the bottom of the phone, that means this component would need to be added to the daughter board, which is already a very component dense area. Putting a big hole in your PCB to fit this jack inside, well, that probably means you're going to sacrifice on other features. But what about making the daughter board bigger, I hear you ask? Well, we'd have to find some more space inside the phone, and that probably means encroaching on the space taken up by the battery, and no wants that. Unfortunately, the market tells us that battery life is more important to people than using wired earbuds, especially when you consider that most people own Bluetooth earbuds these days. Anyway, that doesn't matter because this is Zach's dream phone, so let's assume technology has caught up. How much would it cost to add a jack and an SD card reader? Well, apparently only 50 cents each, so a lovely dollar added to the bill. A crisp. You know one of these? I can't make the noise. Next up, we have the mid-frame. Apple and Samsung's flagships often boast that they use titanium because it's a super strong material. But as Zach points out in a few of his videos, often they're not telling you the whole story. The whole story. Only the external portions of the device are lined with titanium, with the inside still being made of the same aluminium as everyone else. So why are they lying to us like this? Why do they proudly shout about grade five titanium when they've only done half a job? Why, Tim? Why? As you've probably already guessed, it comes down to costs. Titanium is a super durable material that's used for things like strengthening aircraft. For context, the boiling point of aluminium is 660 degrees, whereas titanium is 1668 degrees. So as you can imagine, this makes manufacturing this material pretty hard. To make a phone's mid-frame, you'd typically use a CNC machining process. And this is a technique where you use a big block of material and kind of drill away at it until you get your desired shape. This is a CNC, by the way. Is that good? That's why on a lot of mid-frames you see that circular pattern, which is what's left over from the drill part moving right across the material. And although this process is super common, when you switch out the material for something harder like titanium, these drill parts wear out much quicker, meaning you need to replace them more, which costs money, in addition to the cost of the material itself. Obviously. But by how much? Well, an individual titanium mid-frame would cost around $45, which might not sound like much, but by comparison, an aluminium mid-frame typically costs somewhere around $10, so we're looking at over four times the cost here. From the start, it's been clear that Zach wants to add the most durable materials possible. So what's the hardest material we all know about? Diamonds. So Zach's asked us to add four synthetic diamond discs to each corner of the rear panel to stop it rocking when it's on the table. Puzzle doesn't rock either. We've got like, we've got two lovely discs. But these aren't Minecraft diamonds, this is pucks of diamond dust that's been subjected to a million PSI to form a disc of one of the hardest materials on planet Earth. Zach even mentioned that these discs are more likely to damage the desk that you put your phone on rather than being scratched themselves. Because we're using some pretty unconventional materials here, we've had to use some informed estimates for the prices of these components. And of course, the cost of these diamond discs would reduce if you were going to produce them at volume. But for this small batch hypothetical project, each of these diamond discs is going to set you back $50 each, which equals $200 for all four of them. And if you think that's expensive, good God. Here we go. 
the most expensive part of Zach's phone, the sapphire glass. We all know that regular glass and gorilla glass scratches at level six with deeper grooves at level seven. Zach wants to remedy this. And his solution? More expensive materials, this time sapphire. It's normally reserved for high-end watches. I don't blame you for wondering why it's not made the leap to smartphones. It considerably outperforms regular glass in scratch tests. In fact, back in 2013, Apple actually signed a deal for $578 million with a sapphire manufacturer. Whoa! At the time, it was highly anticipated that Apple was going to use Sapphire Crystal on the iPhone 6, but over 10 years later, we're still yet to see a single iPhone with Sapphire Crystal on their screens. That's a privilege they've reserved for the Apple Watch lineup. So that begs the question, why no Sapphire on my phone, bro? You guessed it. Yet again, it's very expensive. This process requires mixing synthetic Sapphire and aluminium oxide and heating them up to about 2,200 degrees before embarking on a 17-day cooling cycle. Wow, you've really been watching some How It's Made episodes. This results in a big crystal known as a boule, and from that point you just need to cut it up into screens and give it a good polish to make it as clear as glass. Okay, now we've got that out of the way, it's time to crush Zach's dreams, because unfortunately it seems like his phone might be impossible to make, unless it looks something like the Unihertz Tank 3 Pro. But this is a dream phone video after all, so we can use our imaginations a little bit and assume that technology has caught up. Plus, that's going to help our render look a lot nicer. So, how much did this all cost? The final cost for Zach's dream smartphone would be... $993. All that's left is to show Zach the final phone and reveal that all-important bond price. Oh, that looks so good. I like that you guys went like super raw with like the transparency of it. A lot of times, you know, there's interpretations of what it might look like inside, but this time it was like the actual circuitry. You had a prediction that the bond price for a product of this spec would be somewhere around a thousand USD. How close do you think we uh, got looking at the, the render? Knowing that it's sapphire and there's diamond inserts, I would say between a thousand and fifteen hundred probably so it's gone up slightly a little bit that looked really good the, the, the visual of it makes it seem more expensive well amazingly from our research anyway the total bond price came to 993 dollars no way that is uh, awesome is this sort of phone you'd be a customer for 100 percent. it looks good it's going to last forever premium materials it's all about the build quality in my mind I would love to show that off in real life if it was possible to actually make it, you know?